yes, this candle smells just as amazing as it looks. It's my number one selling candle for a reason. I even had to make a hundred of them for the 2020 season premiere of The Bachelorette. And today I'm gonna show you exactly how I make the candle, including my marbling method. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Let's start off with the fragrance oil. I get this one from Bulk Apothecary. It is Juicy Strawberry and it sells so well. I actually have to buy it in the 25 pound pail. So I actually have to transfer it to a smaller jar so it's easier to manage. Today we're going to use the straight sided tumbler as well as some Eco 12 wicks to adhere glue guns or wick stickers. You need your fragrance as well as a pouring pot and a stirring element. This recipe will get you 16 candles total. So you want to start by prepping all your jars first, then adhering your wicks. And I want to show you about how much glue if you're using glue guns that I put onto the wicks and then just go ahead and center them. It's really important that you get those wicks nice and centered. That will save you a lot of time in the long run. Now we're going to go ahead and add the wax. So you want to start by tearing your scale and then pouring in your wax. For this recipe, we're gonna use about 74 ounces of wax. Um, this is going to give us about eight candles total. So just go ahead and slowly make your way to the top. Make sure you get yourself a really good scale. It definitely saves time and money. Now we're gonna pour in the fragrance. The fragrance is going to be about nine ounces of fragrance total. Played around with these numbers quite a bit, and this measurement tends to give me the best hole in hot girl. I went over a little bit, but that's okay. This next step is very important. You want to finesse your stern so that the wax and the fragrance molecules can incorporate themselves together. You're letting your wax cool to about 130 to 140 degrees. You want to go ahead and pour. Now where you're pouring, I always suggest that you pour very slowly. When you pour too fast, this will give your candles a tendency to create sinkholes. And although we can fix them, the less things that we have to do on the other end of making candles, the better. Now, when making these strawberries and whipped cream candles, we're honestly just gonna mess them up. Now that your candles are poured, let's go ahead and set the wicks. Today, we're using these true wicks that I get from Sierra Candles. I love them because they are very sturdy and stable. They don't slip into the wax and you can use them for multiple different types of candles. Not to mention, I almost always get a perfectly centered wick using these. And also, look how clean and professional it looks when it's all done. I just love the look of this, definitely my go-to. So now, once your candles are cooled, it is time for the fun part. So go ahead and remove your wick holders and you see that nice smooth candle, no sinkholes, no wet spots. That's just because we did it right. I like to let the candles cool for about 24 hours because I feel it gives me a better canvas when it comes to marbling. My candle dye box, a beautiful disaster, but it works for me. Today I'm using a cake decorating tray, one of the ones that spin, a regular plate, my heat gun, and a little metal wire. I normally use a paper clip, but I couldn't find it today. So you want to start by actually heating up the candle. Yes, this process is tedious, but beauty takes time. And so you want to heat up the entire candle again so you get the outer layer of wax to melt as well as the top. Now, this is where everyone tends to go wrong when marbling candles and they use too much dye. Each color dye has a different density and will move and act differently. This red dye is from Candle Science. It's extremely thick and just a little bit goes a long way. So you don't have to use too much. And all I do is dip my utensil into the side of the jar and move it around. Um, if you want to create different designs, what I like to do is use the heat gun and hold it on a blank space. And what will happen, like in this picture or this design, the wax will start to travel to where the wax is starting to melt wherever you place the heat gun. So it creates this really cool swooping effect that you see here. 
The beautiful thing that I love about marbling is it's really an art where each piece will come out different. It's time to smooth up the tops, which is a little bit of a game because you don't want to melt it too much to create one color on the top. You still want this beautiful marbled effect. Now it's time to label. Also, don't forget your warning sticker and you are done. There you go. You have some beautiful strawberries and whipped cream candles. And like I promised you, I wanted to show you a couple of different candles and how they turned out. Like I said, they're all different and that's the beauty of these candles. Now these candles work amazing as a unique value proposition to bring attention to your candle line. I would not recommend making it the staple of your line, but it's a great way to draw in customers. I hope that you have learned a new skill and that you'll be able to take this and do some amazing things. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. All the details to everything I use will be in the description below.